Welcome to the world of Cinerama, a revolutionary cinematic experience that took audiences on breathtaking journeys beyond the confines of traditional movie screens. This ill-fated cinematic oddity is a small speed bump in the history of film, so why on earth would anyone be interested in it? Well, it's because I'm a nerd. Today, we're going to be delving into the history of Cinerama, exploring its inception, rise to fame, and the lasting impact it left on the world of cinema. The roots of Cinerama can be traced back to the 1950s, a time when the movie industry faced fierce competition from television. In the 40s, 50s, and 60s, several wars gave the film industry government money, which drove the film industry to block booking hundreds of movies into theaters the studios owned to maximize profits. But with the government on some antitrust shit, and the rise of television telling small, familiar stories to audiences, the film industry had to change things up. See, there was a strange phenomenon in film history when small stories stop becoming viable, the film industry tries to go big. Now this is a story about three guys who try to go big, seeking to rekindle the magic of cinema. Three visionaries, Fred Waller, Marion C. Cooper, and Hazard E. Reeves, collaborated to develop an innovative widescreen format that would deliver an immersive experience unlike anything before. For those of you who aren't film nerds, basically, film didn't always look the way it does now. Film used to primarily be in this. It's called the Academy Ratio. You may know it as 3-4. For decades, it was pretty much this. In fact, some films are still shot in this today. Some examples being Marriage Story and Wes Anderson's Grand Budapest Hotel. On a side note, Robert Eggers' The Lighthouse is shot in 1.191, even smaller than Academy. I had to bring up A24. Now, why, you may ask? Well, it's because I have several screenplays that y'all might want to read. There's one called... When Cinerama premiered in 1952 with the film This Is Cinerama, audiences were left in awe. The sensation of speed and depth was unprecedented. Scenes of roller coasters, aerial acrobatics, and even travel logs became thrilling experiences as viewers felt as though they were part of the action. However, the use of three projectors brought a host of challenges. Aligning the images perfectly was a meticulous process, and projectionists required special training to handle the complexities. The three projectors had to run simultaneously and in sync with one another, or else the illusion is ruined. Also, the giant curved screen required an extensive remodel, something that many theater owners didn't want. Furthermore, the screen could only show Cinerama films. The gamble was not worth the risk. Despite these technical difficulties, the unique experience Cinerama offered drew audiences to theaters like moths to a flame. The popularity of Cinerama spread like wildfire, leading to a series of travelogue films that showcased the world's most breathtaking locations. Movies like Cinerama Holiday, Seven Wonders of the World, and South Seas Adventure took viewers on immersive journeys exploring far-off lands from the comfort of their seats. But there's one big issue with all of this. The studios didn't want anything to do with Cinerama. They saw it as a fluke. Basically, the big studios really don't like change. To them, Hollywood is specifically engineered to run exactly how the studios want them to run. So Cinerama is a threat to them. And if you can't beat them, join them. Then the big studios to try their hand at Cinerama. The Western epic How the West Was Won was the first foray into the brave new world for Cinerama. Based on a series of Time Magazine articles detailing the westward expansion of the United States, the film was supposed to be a somewhat safe bet on Cinerama. A western based on a series of popular articles in one of the most influential magazines ever, in a format they can't get at home, this was the make or break moment for Cinerama. The film was a nightmare to shoot. Shooting with three cameras at the same time is difficult in a stagnant shot, let alone a dolly or a truck. Out in the desert and wilderness with a lot of livestock is not conducive to an experimental environment. A film that took three directors nine months to make, with only one other competitor going balls deep on this Cinerama thing that they thought was a fad, How the West Was Won boomed at the box office, bringing in almost $50 million worldwide on a budget of $15 million. 
it was even nominated for several awards. The powerhouse performances of Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne getting special praise. But the powerhouse cast is exactly as advertised. The film was an Oscar juggernaut, nominated for several smaller awards, more technical awards, but still nabbing a Best Picture nod without any acting nods, oddly enough. One of the rare times this happened. The film won for screenplay, sound, and editing, and all are very much earned. Despite the initial success, the novelty of Cinerama began to wane as audiences grew accustomed to widescreen formats and larger screens. Hollywood itself adapted and adopted CinemaScope and other widescreen technologies that were more cost-effective and easier to distribute with a more accessible backlog of films. But if it weren't for Cinerama, this technology and the way Hollywood changed wouldn't have existed. Despite the challenges, Cinerama's legacy has lived on, influencing future innovations in filmmaking. Later 20th Century Fox came out with CinemaScope, a similar widescreen format that required less of a renovation, but had a substantial number of movies that brought a new sense of spectacle to the screen. The Robe, Ben-Hur, Rebel Without a Cause are all films that utilize this format. Cinerama sparked a revolution in the entertainment industry, paving the way for other widescreen formats and even 3D technologies. In the end, Cinerama may not have survived in its original form, but its impact on the cinema experience remains undeniable. It reminded filmmakers and audiences alike that cinema has the power to transport us places beyond our imagination. So the next time you find yourself lost in a breathtaking cinematic experience, remember the pioneers of Cinerama, who dared to dream big and change the way we perceive movies forever. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of Cinerama. Don't forget to hit the like button, share, and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing explorations into the world of cinema. Until next time, keep watching and keep dreaming big.